Learn to make a fully working Battle Royale game you can play with friends using my Udemy course. Try for $13.99 using the link in the description. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm back for episode number 5, and in this one what we're going to do is we're going to make a game. And the purpose of making the game is, obviously it's kind of fun, but also I want to show you guys how game mode and game state works. Uh, so these are kind of two things that work together. It's all part of the Unreal Framework. Uh, when you make a game, your game's going to have some rules, and you will define the rules inside of the game mode, and then the game state is kind of like the current state of the game. So the game state would hold stuff like how much score you have, and the game mode would hold stuff like how many points do you need to win the game. So um, we're just going to make a really simple game with like some targets, and you just got to shoot the targets basically, and um, yeah, we'll just we'll do something like that. I don't know. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is if we go to File and go New C++ Class, we're just going to make a bunch of classes. So the first one is going to be an actor. And we're going to call this actor target. So we'll have like some targets that the player has to shoot at. So we'll click on create class. And then we're going to make a game mode. Uh, the project that we have right now already comes with a game mode by default. You can see that down here it says ultimate game mode. So we could probably just keep that to be honest. But we do need to make a game state because it does not come with a game state by default. So we'll add one of those as well. So... Um, Inside of C++ classes, we're just going to right click new C++ class and then we'll go game state and um, oh, this is kind of confusing, they changed it up. So there's basically game state base and this game state. Game state has like a bunch more functionality in it and for our purposes, it's just, it has too much stuff. And that's why game state base exists. Um, game state base is, is basically just like a more toned down version of game state. So we can use game state base because we don't need all the extra stuff that game state has. Um, and then we're going to call this ultimate game state. Um, now, if we're, we're making a target shooting game. So target shooting game state would be a better name. But because I call it an ultimate game mode, let's just call it ultimate game state. And then click on create class. Okay, so there's a lot to do. But don't worry, we're going we're gonna to go nice and slow and I'll just walk you guys through what we need to do. So the first thing that you might remember is that we had a blueprint thing going on where if the bullet hit something, we would destroy the bullet. And we did that in blueprints. And I said that I was going to move that over to C++. So we're going to do the equivalent in C++. And the, the issue with this is I'm going to have to introduce you to the concept of delegates. And if you're a reasonably new programmer, you might get a little bit confused by delegates, but I'll try my best to explain how they work. So there is a delegate inside of the actor class called on actor hit. And basically this delegate is called when the actor hits something. And when I say the delegate gets called, what I mean is basically we can bind a function to the delegate. And then when the actor hits something, the function will be called. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to say, hey, when the bullet hits something, let me call a function, right? It's, it's very similar to inside of the sphere pawn, how we said, hey, when we press this key, call this function. It's basically the exact same thing, except instead of when I press the key, it's when the bullet hits something, then call the function. So to bind a function to a delegate, we're going to use the add dynamic macro here and it requires two things the first thing it wants to know is what object are we calling the delegate on and we're just calling it on this object and then the second thing is what function are we actually calling so we're going to make a function inside of here um, and i haven't made it yet but just type this out just say on bullet hit this is a function that's just going to get called when the bullet hits something now the problem is uh, this function is going to need a few different parameters to be compatible with the delegate. Because delegates have function signatures that need to match, I don't know, if you're, if you're a new programmer, this is all gonna sound a little bit confusing, but all you need to do is right click on, on actor hit, go to definition, I'll make the font a little bit bigger here as well. And then here you can see it says F actor hit signature. So this is the signature for the actor hitting something basically. And if we right click on this, and go to the definition of that. Now we can actually see the signature for the function. 
And so all you need to do is just copy this part here and just copy that and then go into bullet.h and we're going to make a function called void on bullet hit and then literally just paste that in there. And there'll be a couple of um, commas that you'll have to get rid of. But now this should work absolutely perfectly. One other kind of weird quirk of Unreal is that to use a function with a delegate, you need to type u function above it. And that's it. So now if we go to quick actions and refactorings and then click on create definition. If you go into bullet.cpp, you'll now have this thing here. And you shouldn't have any errors here. So basically, now that this is bound, whenever the bullet hits something, we can do something inside of this function. So all we need to do to have the same stuff that we had over in Blueprints is type destroy in here. So now when the bullet hits something, it'll destroy itself. And we can get rid of that Blueprint stuff, by the way. Okay, let's handle the target really quick. So the target is a custom actor that I'm making. And its purpose is literally just to sit there and then when we shoot it, to give the player a point. So um, what I'm going to do is I'll give it a component. So we'll just come down here and say u static mesh component target mesh. And that's all the target is going to be. It's just literally a mesh that just sits there, does nothing. And then when we shoot it, give the player some points. And we'll make this edit anywhere. And I'm going to give this a category of components. And then I'm sure you guys are fairly familiar with this by now. We just need to go into the constructor and say target mesh equals create default sub object u static mesh and if you do unreal for any length of time you will type this out a million times this create default sub object thing you'll type it all the time because this is basically how you create components so um, that's all we need to do we just need to create a target mesh I'll also set it as the root component because why not and that is, that's literally it. Very, very simple. Um, I think that error is just Visual Studio being weird. Okay, so anyways, the game mode as a class is what handles the rules of the game. And the game state handles the current state of the game. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically handle stuff like, well, what happens when I shoot a target? We're going to handle that inside of the game mode. So let's do that. We're going to make a function called on target hit. Now you might not you might like to have some parameters here like what target did we hit and all that sort of stuff, but just having it I just want to keep it really simple. We're just going to have an on target hit function. And we'll also have a int32 called points to win. And this is going to be the amount of points that the player needs to score in order to win the game. Because remember, the game mode defines the rules of the game and one rule about our game is how many points do we need to win the game? So we'll make that a U property and we're gonna say edit anywhere and then I'm gonna give it a category. I'm just gonna say game rules, right? Because this is kind of one of the rules of the game. Inside of the constructor here, I can say points to win equals five or maybe you want it to be 10 or something, but I'm gonna say that once you shoot five targets, you've officially won the game. So that's the that's a good start. Now we're going to on target hit. We're going to create a definition. So what are we going to do when the player hits a target? Well, when we hit the target, we want to give the player a point. But where are we going to score the player's points? Well, the game mode stores rules about the game, and the game state scores the current state of the game, aka how many points do we currently have. So it would be perfect to chuck that inside of the game stat. So we're going to do exactly that. If I type int32 points, I'm literally just going to have that inside of the game stat. And we also need to say what the default value is for points. I'm going to say that by default, the player starts off with zero points because we wouldn't want the player to have any points when they start the game. So what we'll do is we'll get the game state. Now to get the game state, it's very simple. There's literally a variable inside of the game mode class called game state, so that's all we have to do. However, since we have a custom ultimate game state class, we are going to need to do a cast. A cast is just something we need to do because the game state is of the type a game state, 
but because we have our own custom one, we need to sort of do a cast here. It's, a, it's fairly hard to explain, but if you've done much programming before, you will probably already know what a cast is. Um, so anyways, we'll do a ultimate game state, and I'm just going to give it a name like GS for game state, and we're going to cast ultimate game state, and then in here we'll just type game state, and what we're going to do is we're going to say GS points plus plus. So basically what that means is just take the player's points and add one to it. So every time the player hits a target, give the player a point. And then eventually we have this thing here called points to win, right? So what we need to do is we need to say that if the game state points is greater than or equal to points to win, then the player's won the game. Um, and what I'm going to do if you win the game is I'll just do a log in the console. And I'll say, you won the game. And I'll do it else here, and I'll say, you scored a point. You now have percentage D points. And then we can display the points by doing GS points. So what that's going to say is basically, if we won the game, you won the game. Otherwise, just say how many points the player now has. So we're going to log all that out inside of the game. Now, the last thing that we need to do is we need to call this function, because we've made the function that tracks how many points the player has and all that good stuff, but we still are not calling that function. So inside of the bullet hit function, now we can start doing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if we hit a target or not, because this function is going to get called no matter what we hit. So what we want to do is we want to check if we actually hit a target. And the way that we do that is we say if... Oh, and by the way, if you're getting errors here, simply just go up and type include ultimate game state dot h. It's very important that you add that, otherwise it won't work. And inside of the bullet dot cpp, you also need to type that. Make sure that you type include ultimate game mode and include target. Anyways, once that's done, we're going to check if we hit a target. And we're going to use a cast in order to check if we hit another target. So what we'll do is we'll say a target, target equals cast. And then we're going to take the other actor. So what we're doing is we're taking the other actor that we hit with our bullet, and we're going to cast it into a target. If the cast succeeded, then that means that we hit a target, basically. So once we've hit a target, we can just give the player a point. But to give the player a point, we need to get the game mode, because you remember the game mode is what handles giving the player points. So to get the game mode, it's quite simple. You just do ultimate game mode. We're going to cast it because we're using a custom game mode. I'm just going to call it GM. And we will literally just do get world get auth game mode and that will get the game mode and now we can just do gm on target hit so when the bullet hits something check if the bullet hit a target if we did hit a target then grab the game mode and tell the game mode that we hit a target from there the game mode is going to go ahead and get the game state and it's going to give the player a point if the points has gone over five then you've won the game Otherwise, just tell us how many points we have. So let's go ahead and try this out. I actually have not tested this, so I don't have a clue whether this works or not, but I'm, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. <laughs> okay, so there's a few things that we need to sort out first. The first one that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the world settings, and we need to tell the game to use our new game mode that we made. Because we made a new game mode, but we haven't actually selected the game mode yet. So to select the game mode, you just go to world settings. If you don't have world settings, just go to window... And then it's right there. So click the drop down and then we're going to click on ultimate game mode. And let's actually go ahead and make a blueprint of the game mode. Because you can, I, I like to make blueprints of everything because it just makes it easier to change settings. So let's right click on ultimate game mode. In fact, do we already have... No, we don't. Okay, right click on ultimate game mode. Create blueprint class. And we're just going to put it in the content folder, and I'm going to call this BP underscore 
ultimate game mode. And uh, you might remember we had that thing called points to win. So if you weren't happy with the number five, you could change that in here and say that you actually want to have 50 points to win or 20 points to win. But I'm just going to keep it at five. And also one thing that the games, uh, game mode sets up is what game state do we use? And you remember we now have a custom game state that we use, so we'll go ahead and click the drop down and select ultimate game state, which is our new one that we made. Compile, save. And that's pretty much it. Let's go do our C++ classes now, go to ultimate and make some targets, or make a, a blueprint for the target, so create blueprint. Just put in the content folder and I'm going to call this BP underscore target. Click on target mesh. We're going to go to static mesh and you can just make your targets whatever you want. There's a ton of meshes to choose from. Um, I'm just going to make mine a sphere. Perfect. Okay, so once you have your sphere, you can drag a bunch of these targets into the level. They're actually quite big. Um, yours might be different size depending on what mesh you chose. But I'm just going to put a bunch of targets around the level and now our goal is to shoot these targets. One other thing that I forgot about as well is if we go into BP Bullet, you remember we had the event hit set up in here so that if we if we hit it, you can just, just delete that because we're now handling that on C++ so we don't want to do that in Blueprints as well. So just delete that and yeah, that should be it. Okay, for some reason I had like a little bit of trouble getting it to call the hit function but all I can say is that if you go to world settings and you make sure your game mode override is set to BP ultimate game mode and then just to make absolutely sure it's working go to edit project settings maps and modes and then for the default game mode select BP ultimate game mode and now um, we should be able to see this working what you can do is go to window developer tools output log and then you should have this log window I'm just going to dock it in here and what we'll do is we'll play the game. So now if I shoot these targets that I've dragged and dropped into the level, you can see it says you scored a point, you now have one points. You have two points, three points, four points, and then it says you won the game. So we've now won the game basically, and that's the game. Wow, how great is that game guys? What a sick game. Um, I, I, I think you could probably charge people $60 on Steam for that. But, um, <laughs> I don't know, we're just, we're playing around, we're having fun with it, and um, we'll make something cooler later on. I think the way we can make this game more fun is we could destroy the targets when you hit them, and we could also make the targets move, because they're way too easy to shoot right now. But really, the, the main purpose here anyway is I just want to show you guys how these game mode and game states work. So that's the main thing, if you've gotten that out of the video, and you now sort of have a basic understanding of what game mode is, and a basic understanding of what game state is, that's the main thing. The rest is just polish, and, you know, you're just here to learn. <laughs> We're not here to make AAA titles, but, man, I don't know. We'll make it cooler in the next video. Anyways, that's been video number five. I'll see you guys for video number six. All right, see you later.